Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Welcome, Welcome to Build Your AutoCAD IQ. My name is Ashley and joining me today are my colleagues Michael, Almis, and Nauman. And Michael's going to be giving you an introduction to AutoCAD Civil 3D. So a little bit about us, um, Michael and I are both based out of our Boston office and we are a technical support specialist. Almas is also a technical support specialist and he is based out of our Manchester office. So before we get into the actual presentation, um, we have a quick poll for you and that poll is, is this your first Autodesk help webinar? We'll give you a few seconds there to complete that. And that was pretty quick. It looks like 92% of you, this is not your first Autodesk Help webinar, so welcome back. And for 8% of you, it is. So welcome. Okay, sorry, forgot to share that. Okay, there we go. Feel free to leave questions in the chat window and we'll answer them as best we can. We have Almas in there helping out. So this session will be recorded and links are available in the registration reminder, the post-webinar survey, as well as the chat window. Some of our upcoming webinar topics include on October 12th, we have Back to Basics, an introduction to external references. On October 27th, we have Beyond the Basics, working with data extraction in AutoCAD 2017. On November 3rd, we have the third dimension, laser cutting with AutoCAD 2017. And then on November 10th, we have tips and tricks to be determined. You can watch past webinars at any time on our AutoCAD, um, Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar playlist. If you'd like to follow along, please feel free to download the data sets from Box. And of course, our Autodesk Knowledge Network, we have a ton of information for AutoCAD LT, AutoCAD, as well as all of the verticals. So please take some time and, and visit the um, Knowledge Network. So Answer Day is coming soon. Um, Answer Day is where you can get your product questions answered by product experts covering AutoCAD, Fusion 360, and Inventor. When is it? It's October 27th, so please come and join us. It's going to be on the online uh, Autodesk community, and we'll have all products covered in English as well as German for AutoCAD and Inventor. For more info, please visit Autodesk slash Answer Days. So this week's agenda includes geolocation, points and surfaces, alignments and profiles, assemblies and corridors, cross-sections and plan production, and pipe network. So Michael, are you ready to show everyone some AutoCAD Civil 3D? Thank Thanks, Ashley. Yeah, uh, let's, let's get started. Um, yeah, that list initially was very much kind of a broad overview of what we're going to be going over. Um, I won't be able to show everything, but let's, uh, let's see what we can get through here. Um, so yeah, uh, normally we do the Build Your AutoCAD IQ. This is definitely a different one. Uh, we are going to be going over Civil 3D. It's built on top of AutoCAD, so all of your basic commands are in here. Um, but you get to play around with a few neat tools. Um, right now, I have a subdivision up on my screen. Um, kind of some line work here. This is actually a project that one of our own Autodesk employees was a part of. Um, you might notice that there is this neat toolbar down here. It's a tool space toolbar. Um, don't really see that in AutoCAD. It's one of those uh, you know, civil, civil uh, tools. Um, before I actually keep going, or I wanted to kind of just mention this is not going to be a replacement for training. I'm really just kind of showing what Civil 3D can do. Um, so this is not a take as best practices or use this in lieu of training. If you need that, definitely you should go and get that. Um, but without further ado, let's uh, let's get to it. So like I mentioned, this is line work for a project that one of our Autodesk employees was working on. Um, all this line work is geo-referenced. Um, you know, when you're working in normal AutoCAD, sometimes the location doesn't really matter. 
Um, when you're working in civil, it's very nice to actually know where your line work is located in the real world. Um, so this line work is georeferenced. Now this beautiful black background at the back doesn't really do it much, much justice. So let me turn on the map. So you can see that I wasn't lying. <laughs> this is actually you know, somewhere out in the world. Um, this project was actually already completed. That's why the line work kind of shows up nicely and overlaps where it should in the real world. You can actually see all the houses in there, the roadways. Um, what I did over here was I actually just turned on the Bing map um, and it's just you know an overlay so you can see your map in the background. For now, I'm going to turn this map off just because for the features that I'm going to be showing, it's going to get a little bit in the way. Um, first thing that I'm going to go through, points. So AutoCAD does have points. Um, your points are just exactly what it sounds like. It's a point. Has an X, Y, Z value. However, in Civil 3D, we use COGO points, short for coordinate geometry points. They're a little bit different from those normal AutoCAD points. You could have plenty of properties associated with them. So you could have point numbers, um, point names, um, descriptions. So if you, you know, are surveying out in the field, you can bring in points with descriptions. Uh, you can you know, tell them apart, so you can do top of curve, bottom curve, center line of the road, you know, et cetera. So Kogo points do allow you to have a little bit more customization. And they also let you have them outside the file, whereas in AutoCAD, it's they're inside you know, your AutoCAD file. Um, this guy actually only has one point in it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to insert a bunch of other points. I'm going to go here. Before I do that, actually, let me isolate this so that you could see the points better. I'm going to hide these guys because we're not going to be using them for now. Go here. And now it's bringing in those cocoa points. Give it a second to go through it here. And there you go. So there's a bunch of points here. Um, if I were to turn the line work back on, it kind of, you know, this is what was, this is the topography for that line work that I was showing you. So had it in a separate file, brought it in. Now that we have these points in here, um, you, know, you could select them individually. They're not like a point cloud. They all don't belong together, you know, one big entity. You could actually go in there, um, see some of the stuff that I was mentioning. So you have your point numbers, raw descriptions. These don't have descriptions, but if you wanted to add that in there, you could. Um, you can play around with what they, how they look. What I'm gonna do right now, create a point group for them just to keep ourselves a little bit organized. Like I mentioned, Kogo points do give you that ability to organize your points uh, so they're not just floating around. So I'm going to create this one. I'm going to make this guy EG for existing ground. Points now I'm going to keep that the same. For points to include, I'm going to select them in here. All my points are selected. Uh, the reason that this has that too is because if you remember that there was that one point already in the drawing, so didn't select it because it's somewhere off in space. So right now, I'm going to include these guys. So now we have, crank through it over here. And notice that it changed the way that it looked. Now why? Um, we're actually going to touch on this a little bit later, and in AutoCAD you also have a little bit of this, or actually this is actually a pretty prominent feature in AutoCAD as well, but um, styles. So the styles that I used for existing grade, I just used some basic styles. If I were to go to point group and bring this guy back up, it would change back to how they look like before. So for now, I keep those points up there. I'm actually going to create one more point group. Give it a second here. Create one more. We're going to make this no-show because later on this is going to be a lot of data up on our screen. So I don't want that. Copy this guy. As I had mentioned, there's, um, you know, we have styles in Civil 3D. I'm going to go into it a little bit more later, but just to show you points, not jump all over the place. I'm going to turn everything off for this style. 
so that once I want my points to go away, I have that option. For now, not going to go down that road though. So I have all these points, great. What do I do with them? So now that I have all these points, all this data, I can actually go in and create a surface. So what are surfaces? Um, surface is kind of exactly what it sounds like if you have a ball. It's the surface of the ball. If you have a table, the top of the table is your surface. Um, in this case, all these points make up the topography, so that's going to be our you know, existing ground surface. Um, to you know, create the surface, tool space, as I had mentioned before, this is a very, very handy tool down here. So I'm going to right click on surface, create surface. You're going to notice me going down here a lot. You can do a lot of stuff through your tool space. Change the name over here to existing ground. Actually, now I'm just make it EG for short. Great, so now I have surface, but it doesn't really include anything in there. If I were to go into the surface itself, to surface properties, there's nothing in there. So this is where I'm going to play around with the definition of it. And I actually want to add my EG point group in there. So it has all those points in there. Now if I were to go back and select the surface, you can see that it actually started populating with information because I just added all of these points in there. Um, now you're probably wondering, well, great, now where is that surface? Uh, I don't think it's showing right now. Let's go in here, surface. Uh, let's see, apply. Alrighty, so here's the surface. This is what we actually just created. Now, if you remember before, I actually created a no-show point group, and this is where it's going to come in useful. I'm going to go back. Should be there. No. Nope. So what ended up happening was it didn't take my no-show style. Come on. Turn everything off. I don't want them to show. Huh. Let's see if I can get them to go away. So that's the original. Bring this guy back up. Huh. All right. Well, points aren't going away, but that's fine. We can leave them in there for now. We have our surface created. Um, this is kind of one of the you know, most basic objects in there. Um, once you have your surface, you can actually go on and start creating your design. Um, your surface is, you know, it gets referenced in by a bunch of other stuff that I'm going to mention down the line, such as your alignments, profiles, assemblies. Right now, this might not mean much to you, but once you actually get to see what it does, it's actually all pretty cool. Um, another thing, if you wanted to actually look at your surface, select it, you could go to the object viewer, and see that I did create now this, this nice surface. Uh, actually, now I'm remembering why point groups didn't show up. I never added them. Now this should work. There you go. So reason that the points weren't showing up before was because I actually created a point group and didn't have any points in there. So now this is a lot cleaner. Now we can actually get going on the rest. Um, so now I was mentioning styles a lot. Uh, styles really let you dictate what your drawing is going to look like. Um, with the points that I was using, you could see that it definitely changed very much according to the different point groups that I was using. Um, let me kind of show you how you can play around with surface properties. Um, let's say, you know, I don't want all these contours in there. I just change the style, change this. See, this was only border. Now if I wanted to do one to five, you know, one foot and five foot contours, I could do that. I could change the intervals of the contours that are showing. Um, for now, what I actually want to do to show the next part 
is I only want to show major contours. So I'm going to do this, delete those guys. I'm going to go to display, turn off my minor contours. That's okay. And here are contours at every five feet versus every, you know, my minors, which were every foot, and then my majors, which were every five feet. Um, you can do this for just about everything in Civil. You can look down here. Before we were playing around in the prospector, the prospector is where you can go in and create stuff, edit. Settings is really where you can go in there and change your styles. So points, point styles, you can play around in here. Uh, I actually created a point style, the no-show, so it should be in there. This is the no-show that I had created before. So this is kind of something that you would do in your template in the very beginning. So if you're working at a company, sometimes you'll have your company template so that everybody in your office has the same look and feel to your drawings. This is very useful when you're submitting plans you know, to a government agency. A lot of them like to have it have the plans in a specific way every time. So this is kind of something that you would set up once and not really worry about. Um, you would save it, you know, create your styles, save it as a template. So you also have these in AutoCAD, but you would just save it as a DST, so, or DWT, sorry, right down here. And then you would just use that as your template as you, you know, progress and then you don't have to worry about doing it every single time. So now we have this beautiful surface in here with five foot contours, um, similar to AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. There's some labels in here, except that there are some additional options. You can add labels to your surface. So for now, the reason that I took away all those contours was to show you how you can just easily go in there so I selected Add Labels, come to Surface, Contour Single. Just select in here, and you can see how I'm labeling all those contours, and it's all dynamic. So the you know the surface it has those contours in there, it has that information, and it has as I had mentioned, they're at five foot intervals. And if you look at the labels, you know, down to 105, down to 110, down to 115, like it, it actually is populating correctly. Um, you don't have to go in there and do it one at a time. You can also just do multiples. So I'm going to just draw this line. And what this is going to do is every time, every time that a lot, the line that I'm drawing intersects with a contour, it creates a label at that point. So many ways to go about it, but you know, easy way to show information so that people know exactly what you're trying to show in your drawing. Alrighty, so now we have our surface. Um, actually, let me show you one more thing. You can definitely play around with your surface. You could, you know, now that we've created it, it doesn't mean that it's set in stone. Right now I'm going to draw a polyline just to show you some cool stuff that you can do. Have this polyline in there, great. What am I going to do with it? You could add boundaries your surface. So if it's a huge surface and you only want to focus on one spot, go in here. You could add boundaries. So just uh, let's add the test boundary. Select here. And now I cut, cut my surface. These guys were out there. And now since I did cut my boundary, or I did cut my surface, there's no more data out here. So these labels, since they were dynamic, it's like, hey, there's no more contours out here, so what What are we? It's just, it still says it's a label, but there's no information, so it doesn't know what to, you know, what to label out there. All righty. So now I'm going to bring back my line work. So I'm going to end my object isolation. This is pretty busy in here. Bear with me for a little bit. You have a surface in the background. Don't really need to show it right now. So I'm going to go back, surface properties. I'm going to make it no display. Um, so now it's gone. If you do want to get it back and you're like, oh, no, I can't select it, just go back to your prospector. 
it's going to show up here unless you deleted it from the drawing. You could always just find it in here and then go surface properties and change it again. Um, but now we have our line work. Um, so the cool thing about Civil 3D is that you could make, you know, you hear corridors and, well, what are they? Um, so it's, it's, it's a roadway. That's, that's really what the corridor is. Um, so it's kind of split up into three separate sections. You have your horizontal design, you have your vertical design, and then you have your cross sections. Um, so right now I'm going to start off with the horizontal design. Um, horizontal design is what's called your alignment. Alignment can best be thought of as your, you know, your center line. So if you're ever driving down a street and you have your, your double yellow line, you can think of that as your alignment. Um, for now, I'm going to use this guy, conveniently placed right here. And I'm going to make that into an alignment. Notice how, if I were to go here, there's no alignments in my drawing. So I'm going to go to the Home tab, under Alignment, Create Alignment from Object, select that object. It's going to ask me what direction I want my alignment to go. Um, that's doesn't really matter for now. Um, this window will populate or come up. You can decide what you want to name your alignments. Um, a lot of companies have naming conventions. Uh, so, you know, depending on what that is, you might name this something differently. But for now, I'm just going to do proposed roadway, center line. You can play around with the design criteria. So, you know, if you, if you have your AASHTO book and you're there's certain uh, criteria that you need to follow. It's in here. Um, you can decide sites. I'm not going to touch on sites right now, though. But alignment style, since this is a new alignment, I'm going to use that proposed style. And I'm going to keep most of these pretty default. And now you'll see that I have that, that red line turned into this green line. And I was like, well, great, now it's, it's green. What, what's the difference? Now, if I were to go to the, pro the tools paste down here, you could actually see that my proposed roadway is here. You also see that it labeled. So there's stations over here. Um, your station 0 plus you know, 0, 0, 1 plus 0, 0. Best way to think about that, it's, it's in hundreds. So you know, from station zero to station one, that's 100 feet. From station one to station two, it's 200, you know, well, 100, one to two is 100 feet. Um, so the labels are dynamic. So if I were to change this guy over here, so notice that it's at station 1042. If I were to, let's say, put them way out here, went to 1152, 1130. I can bring them all the way out here if I wanted to. I can't even read what that says, but Definitely not the same as before. Now let's go back and make this perpendicular so that we line nicely. Come on. There you go. Alrighty. So we have our alignment. Um, this is kind of where I mentioned you have your horizontal so you know that your roadway is going to go down this way. Uh, the next part would be to make your profile. So profile is your vertical. So you want to, you know, you're just seeing this from a top view. Um, if I were to rotate this, it's still going to look flat. So vertical design is also pretty important, I would say. So let's go up here, profile, and create a surface profile. So what this is going to do is it's going to take that existing ground that I had before and use that to draw out kind of what our you know, your, our elevations are looking like down that alignment. So, proposed roadway, that's correct alignment. We're going to select this EG surface, add in here. So now we want to draw in profile. Um, this guy is going to, let's see, um, that's fine, proposed roadway, major grids, that's okay. And I'll automate all of this so it'll automatically select you know, the stations for us, or if we wanted to create a profile for a specific um, view, you know, specific number of stations, we could do that. Um, for now, just from beginning to end. 
and I'll keep all this all this the same. Alrighty. So this is our profile. Um, now it looks like so since our station zero, let me show you. So we're starting down here. You can, you know it um it lines up. So your station zero over here is your station zero over here. Um, it looks like we're going from you know high elevation to lower elevation. So it almost looks like this subdivision was made on like the side of a hill. So you, know, you can definitely see what your existing looks like over here. Now let me go back to single view. If you wanted to, you could change what this looks like. Um, again, that's you know, that's part of your styles. But if you wanted to, let's just say I want to change this how it looks right now. Select select it. I'm gonna hit a profile style. You can change what it looks like. So let's say I want to make the screen. Make it a little bit easier to see. And go ahead and play around with that to you know just look exactly how you want it to look. So for now we just created what the what the existing is. We haven't actually created our design. So as we did over here, we have our horizontal, so let's start creating our vertical design. So vertical design, you're gonna go back to the home tab, profile, then you're gonna do the, if that goes out of the way, it's a profile creation tool. It's going to prompt you to select a profile that you want to use. So I'm going to select this guy. Again, it's going to ask me for the name. So same, we're going to do proposed roadway. This is similar to before. You have your design criteria. And I'll label it nice, complete label set see everything. And then you have this guy over here. So what this is going to do, it's going to give you all the tools that you need to actually create your profile and get your, you know, your, your vertical design down. Let's see. So I'm going to draw tangents. You're going to want to tie in over here. So um, since this was existing, we're going to be tying into this area. I'm going to definitely want to start there. You don't want to have your roadway like a foot or two above or below where you're supposed to be tying in. So let's keep it like that. Um, since we're pretty steep, I try to make it not too bad, but can't really. <laughs> That's such a steep grade, it's kind of hard. But let me move this guy around. You can move your profile around. So actually, this is a good good thing to point out. All the labels were made, so you could actually see this was your, your starting grade and your station. You could see your you the, lat, the ending grade, so you could see the, the elevation over here and the station. You could see all the grades, so you have your you know, 4, 4.1 percent, 0.51. Yeah, this is really downhill. <laughs> so if I were to move this guys around though, so let's see, 12.38. If I were to move this guy, it updates 1240. So, you know, all of this is dynamic. It adjusts. So, if you decide down the line, hey, I need to change what my uh, you know, vertical design or my horizontal design is going to look like, Civil 3D will go in there and adjust it for you. It also adjusts the grades, so you don't have to worry about making the you know making one change and worrying, hey, you know, where else do I have to go into my you know, design and edit so that it makes sense. So let's me do this. All right. So this looks like a. Let, let's go go along with this guy right now. Uh, you're going to notice that it's just tangents right now. So you have this line going down and it just goes into another line, and then it kind of just ramps over here. You could probably imagine that that would be a pretty bumpy ride if you actually ended up driving down this. So you could make vertical curves. To make your vertical curves, just go over here. So I selected free vertical curve, parabola. So now the next thing it's going to ask is select your entities. 
what do you want to make a curve? So I'm going to select this guy, select this guy. Now it's going to ask me, you know, what would you like to, you know, use as a reference. So you could decide if you want it via K value, your radius. Um, and you could change what that curve is going to, you know, be. So for now, let's, let's, I'm going to make it. Let's make it do it 800 so that it's nice and gradual. Make radius. could actually see that now it's not just a bump. You could actually see that it's you know, a nice little radius, a nice little curve, so that it's not as hard. Um, you could also continue doing that for the rest. And each time it's going to ask you, you know, what do you want? How do you want your, you know, do you want to use the same radius? Do you want to change the length? You know, pass through K. So I'm just going to keep it the same. Let's use 800. You could actually see that it labeled, you know, the vertical curve for us as well. So it's sticking over here a little bit. Uh, there you go. Yep. So, you know, it labels your vertical curves for you, so you don't have to worry about doing that yourself. Um, if I were to, you know, change it, kind of similar, similar to before, I have that option and the label will adjust with it. Of course, you're going to see have places like this where it's overlapping. You can just you know, move your label around. It's not set in stone. So, yeah, as you can see, you know, you make your, you make your edits and it, it, it adjusts as you're making them. So now is probably a good time to start talking about, you know, as you're progressing through your project, um, you have your, this is, you know, the green line was the existing existing topography. Our blue line is our design. Um, since we're going so downhill, you could probably imagine that it's going to be a lot of fill in this area. You know, you can't just build your roadway on top of air. So that's, you know, that's one, one way that you might want to start considering changing your vertical, um, your vertical design. Um, if you wanted to actually figure out what that looks like, Actually, no, I'm not going to do that one right now. Let me, yeah, keep that one in the back pocket. We're actually going to come back to it in a little bit. So we have our horizontal and our vertical design. Now we're going to want to actually make our cross sections so that we know what our roadway looks like. So in Civil, it's called assemblies. Create an assembly. It's in the same home. Can I go to assembly, create assembly. So I'm going to do just typical cross section. Keep it basic. It's going to ask me where I want this guy. So now this is the middle of the assembly. So you know this is kind of where your alignment is. So that horizontal, you know, the horizontal alignment that we were looking at before, that's where this is going to be. This top of this little box over here, that's where your the profile, the one that we drew, is going to be. Um, so now let's let's see what we want it to look like. Um, so since we were, I'm going to try to mimic the line work that we had earlier. So I'm going to press Control three. It's going to bring up a tool palette, and from here we can actually choose what to put in. So I want basic lane. You actually have a bunch of options over here. Lanes, shoulders, medians, curbs, daylights, um, some generic ones. Uh, for now, we're going to do lane. Just make a basic lane. Once you select it, you get the option over here to play around with your parameters. So you don't, you know, you have these, uh, they're called sub-assemblies. You have these sub-assemblies, but you can play around with them. Um, to fit your need. So let's see. I want them to be 14 feet wide. Make the slope. I'm going to keep it at 2. 
yeah, that's fine. So it's put in at the right side. So if I select it here, it's going to populate on the right side. Now if I were to select it again, it's going to populate on the left side. So now let's start building out what our typical cross section is going to look like. Uh, if you go to curb, so we have our lanes, you know, 14 foot wide lanes. Let's go to, hmm, which one do I want? I want, let's do urban, curb gutter general. So again, similar to the sidewalk or to the, uh, the lane, you're going to have a bunch of parameters down here. Um, actually, no, we're covering, push on, please. yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. So, you get to choose what your gutter slope is going to be. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep everything generic there. Yeah, let's keep that generic. So, you have your, your roadway here, you have your curb here. We've got our curb. Let's go and make a sidewalk. You get to choose um, the width of the sidewalk. So um, you'll see, you know, inside boulevard width, sidewalk width, outside boulevard width. Uh, you can play around with this. So you know, if you're walking down the sidewalk and you want, let's say, do nine for us. Um, if you know that you have like four, four feet of grass on the inside of the sidewalk, you know, towards the roadway, you can put that in there. You could also play around with the outside. Um, but for now, I'm just going to make it just a basic nine foot wide sidewalk. Put it right here. So then next, and we have our lane, we have our curbs, and we have our sidewalk. Next, you want to figure out where, you know, how this is going to connect to our original surface. So at you know, end of the day, we're trying to make a design over here we are going to be placing this somewhere in the world. So how do I tie this guy in to the rest of you know, my, my existing topography? So that's where you go to daylight. Um, let's do daylight basin over here. So daylight is what I was talking about. You get to choose um, how, you know, it'll, what it'll do is it'll slope towards your existing topography. Um, I'm going to do Let's do three to one. I'm going to do, actually, no, let me do daylight general. Um, which one would I want? Keep it simple. Yeah, let's do daylight general. Go with zero fee, I'm going to zero everything out. Slope. Put this here. All right. So what this is going to do is, you know, if it's um, if our roadway is going to be a cut, it's going to go up till it meets it. If it's going to be a fill, it's going to go down till it meets it. Um, so now that we have, you know, this all set up. Now, we're going to have to do it for the left side. Luckily, we don't actually have to go through all those steps um, that we just went through. You could just select them, right-click, and mirror. Select right here, and it creates it for you. So you don't have to go through the same work and do it twice. So. Hold up. Let me make sure that before before we continue, because I'm going. We're going to. What we're going to do next is we're actually going to create a corridor out of all this. I'm going to delete these guys because these guys are not the ones that I want to be using. I actually want to use this one. This is the guy. Make this three. Make this three. All these guys are zero. So what this guy is, will actually do, it'll daylight and then create a ditch for you. Zero everything out. Create 
read that guy in there. Come on. One second while I get this guy going. Same that I moved, did before, mirror it over. Okay. So you put this away for now. So we have our assembly. So this is the kind of the last piece that we need to create our corridor. Um, we have our horizontal design, our vertical design, and now these are going to be our cross sections. So to create our corridor, I'm going to go in here, my corridor. Go to name, we're going to do Pose Road. Keep it standard, or keep it basic actually. Um, now it's going to ask you, you know, what alignment do you want to use? Um, luckily we only have one, uh, but if you had multiple, you can select whichever alignment you want to use um, and whichever profile you want to use. And then over here it will ask you what, you know, what assembly do you want to use? So I'm going to do a typical cross section, that's the one that we just made. Over here, it's going to ask you what surface. So what I had mentioned before about the, you know, the daylights and how we're actually going to tie this into real life, this is what it's talking about. So I'm going to have those daylights target this existing surface. I'm going to select that. Press OK. And now you're going to notice that there's this pretty cool guy right here. That is our corridor. So now we've actually created our, our corridor. So this is taking basically our alignment, which is straight across the horizontal profile vertically, and then each each spot where you see those lines, those are that's where our assembly is placed. So now that we have our corridor, there's a few things that we could you know, use it for. Um, similarly to before, where we had our existing surface, we could create a surface from our corridor. Go to corridor surfaces over here. Let me create a new one. Road. Now I'm going to add this link for the top. I'm going to go to boundaries. I want the corridor extents as my outer boundary so that my surface doesn't go on to infinity. Um, what this will do is, you know, wherever the corridor daylighted to our existing surface, it'll stop it right there. So, we have this guy down. Rebuild the corridor. Now you're actually going to see topo because now we have a surface in there. And if I were to select over here in the tool space, you can, you'll see that there's actually a new surface in there. If I were to select it, there you go. So now that we have the surface, um, what I'm going to do is, I had mentioned earthwork before when I was talking about profiles. We're going to have quite a bit of fill in here because our design surface is above the existing. What I'm going to do is going to start doing some earthwork calculations. However, we don't want to do it from the top because, you know, your pavement it's, it has a width to it, so it's not, if you're going to do your earthwork calculations, you're going to want to figure out from the bottom of, your, uh, you know, your card or your cross sections. So I'm going to actually go in and create one more surface, and this one is going to be for the bottom. Properties, 
actually. Yeah, I'm gonna go here. Surface. Create one more. Do bottom of corridor. And I forgot to do this one before top. Make this one Tatum, so that's the bottom. Add this guy in there. Since we're doing it at the bottom, my overhang, I'm gonna make it set it to bottom. For our this is for our um, surface style. Don't want it to show because it's only really going to be used for earthwork calculations. So what I'm going to do is no display, apply, rebuild once more. So now we have another yet another surface. So let's start doing some earthwork calculations. So you can actually go up here, analyze, right in the volume dashboard, and do it all through here. So we're going to create one more surface, tin volume surface. What this will do is, let me do, let me name this one, earthwork. Don't want it to display. No display, actually no, that's fine. Now we have to choose what uh, this, this one's different because we have to choose what um, surface we want and then what comparison surface. So our base surface is going to be our existing topography and we're going to compare it to, to our bottom of corridor. So if for some reason you have, you know, you really don't want to cut or you really don't want to fill, you could change the, the cut fill factors. I'm going to keep it that way for now. Press OK and it generated our earthwork calculations over here. Kind of how we mentioned before, there was going to be a lot of fill because our, you know, our um, profile is above the existing, uh, existing ground. Now, if I were to go in here and change this, have to, now that I've changed my profile, my corridor is going to be different. So let me go ahead and rebuild the corridor. Notice how my earthwork calculations are out of date. So again, it's very dynamic. You know, you make one change and in another spot, you know, Civil 3D will compensate and figure everything out for you so you don't have to worry about going back and manually doing everything once again. So now we have our earthwork calculations. Going to keep that one to the side. If we were to actually go in here, you'll notice that earthwork created a new surface. Um, next step for corridors, um, create your cross sections. So when you're creating your cross sections, um, the way that it's done is using sample lines. So sample lines, what they really do is kind of like how your assembly was your cross section. Um, you know, the sample line, what it'll do is it'll draw a line across your um, corridor at certain intervals, which I'm going to show you in a little bit, and just grab all the information that you wanted to, to get from there and then create um, section views for you. So let's start it off. I'm going to select the proposed roadway alignment. Press OK. So now I have this, and it's going to ask, you know, what what information do you want from this from here? So I don't want, I definitely don't want my the bottom of the corridor. So this this seems like a pretty pretty good way to go. We're going to do existing ground, proposed roadway, so the the corridor, and then the top. So now you can actually see. It's a little bit cluttered in there, but now it's asking me where, you know, where do you want your sample line to go? If I were to go up and down my alignment, the station is updating. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here by range of stations and kind of automate it so I don't have to manually go in and tell Civil, you know, each spot that I want to sample from my corridor. Um, let's see. So I'm going to keep it mostly, mostly the same. Um, you could decide how far 
left and right you want. That's what the swath width is. So if I wanted to, you know, have one side sample further away from the alignment, which is a center line, I can. I'm going to keep them 30, though. I'm going to add at start and at end. Otherwise, it won't sample at the very beginning of my corridor. Press OK. So now it should have sampled everything. The way that you can see, tell, go over here. So under alignments, what it really is doing is it's going to sample down your alignment. And if I were to go down here, you can see under alignments, under that proposed roadway, under sample line groups, there it is. And you can see that I have a bunch of sample lines all at separate stations. So now what am I going to do with these? I'm going to actually create my section views. So I'm going to go up here, section views, going to create multiple views. Now it's going to ask me, you know, how, how do you want your multiple views to be created? I'm going to use that sample line group down that proposed, you know, proposed roadway alignment. I'm going to automate everything. Press next. Now this is uh, further down the line. So for production, um, you can actually select your te company template and it'll you know, fill it in accordingly. Um, however, I'm just going to use standards of you know, just normal out of the box stuff in here. And now I'm going to keep everything mostly the same. Yeah, that's okay. Create my section views. And here you go. So these are our cross sections. So over here, that is the corridor, and down here is the, the surface, so the existing topography. If you notice that the corridor is above, that means that you're probably going to be doing fill, which is what we are going to be doing a lot in this, you know, this um, design. If you notice it below, you can actually see over here the lines are going down because it's coming downwards to meet the um, the existing topography. So now we have our cross sections all ready. Um, we're going to go to actually calculating our materials. You can go into again output. Actually, now it's under analyze. Um, computing materials. We're going to use roadway. I saw one. So what this does is we figured out what our cut fill is before. Um, if you wanted to figure out specific materials, you can go in here. I'm going to do a material list. Now, what this is telling me over here, um, it lets me select the pavement material because that is what the lanes were. So I'm just going to keep this on road pavement one, base material, road base, sub base material. Keep all that. Calculate it out. So this is pretty good if you want to figure out like how much pavement you're going to need. Do material volume table. It's like after you compute the materials, you want to make you know that table including all that information. Um, so here, I'm going to keep that all pretty normal. Pavement select material. So I'm going to do it for pavement. I'm going to keep it dynamic. Press OK. And this is a you know kind of a breakdown of how much material you're going to need between the stations. So it'll tell you, like, you know, from station 0 to you know, 0 to 50 or 0 to 1, it'll tell you how much cumulative volume you need. So by the end of it, you know that you'll need this much material. Um, so we're getting towards the top of the hour here. So I'm going to try to cover as much as I can. Um, another th so let's just get to it. Um, one more thing that you can make. Let's go into pipe networks. So once you actually have your roadway, you might want to figure out how to get rid of all of your rainwater. Create a pipe network. I'm going to use basic um, stormwater. So for the surface name, you're going to do the top of proposed road because that is what you know, it's going to be there once it's all done. Alignment name, proposed road. I'm going to keep the 
keys like this, length, description slope, press OK. So now once you select that, you can actually go and start to decide, you know, what you actually, what pipe structures you want or what, um, you know, what structures you want in your drawing. Um, for this one, I'm going to do 24 by 24. So those are going to be my inlets. I'm going to do a 15 inch concrete pipe. So now it's going to ask me, you know, just put in your insertion points. So notice how it's starting to label everything. So I could have like a here. Of course, this isn't how you would actually do it. You would definitely, if you were creating a project, you would definitely want to do some more research, but I'm just kind of showing what it can do. You'll have a bunch of labels. Um, you can play around with where the labels are placed so that they're not all on top of each other. You could also edit the pipe structures themselves so that it can line up. Let's give Sybil a minute to think here. And Sybil's thinking right now. happening. I'll give it a few more seconds here to see if it populates. But while we're waiting, um, what I, what I kind of wanted to bring across in this one was, you know, you create your pipe network. What you could actually do later on is go into your sample lines, add this pipe network so it'll actually show up under the data that you can sample. And then once you go back to section views, you could add this pipe network into your section views and it'll show up in those cross sections. So you don't have to go in and again manually do it. Um, you could just have it automatically populate in for you and you don't have to worry about going back and forth and doing the same work multiple times. Um, it looks like put in a lot of stuff to this drawing. So, oh, wait a minute. Let me see. Uh, it's, yeah, no, I don't think it's going to go. Well, I guess that was pretty good timing. No worries, Mike. It's, you know, these things, um, these things happen in, in the real world. So, um, let me actually take control and synchronize all three presenters here. Of course, as I gave you back control, it <laughs> came right back. <laughs> all right, so we have um, some additional resources here that are for AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. And we also have um, more additional resources specific to um, AutoCAD Civil 3D. So we encourage you to, to take a look at those. And thank you very much for joining us. Um, Mike was very happy to, to have so many attendees here today for this Introduction to Civil 3D webinar. You did a great job. Um, if you have any questions or feedback for us, please share it. Um, you can email us directly at autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com and put in the subject line, build your AutoCAD IQ. Um, we do not really have so much time for Q. Q&A, but Almas and Alex did a terrific job answering all of the live questions in the chat window. So thank you again for taking the time to join us today, and uh, we hope everyone has a great rest of their week.